My name is um, Jonathan Crofts and um, I've been involved with slow fish for about eight years. Um, I um, became a fishmonger um, in my mind at the age of 18 when I left school, um, and, but it took me a long time to figure out that that's what I loved, and that's what I loved to do. Um, I kind of fell in love with fresh fish and, um, you know, when I was a youngster I, I didn't travel much and, um, and we would get these boxes of fresh fish in every day. Some of them, you know, hand line caught that were caught in the Indian Ocean the day before and some of them that were from Grimsby and then just the smells and the textures, the fact that you could open a box of fresh fish and say place and it would smell like fresh lemons and, you know, every single fish have its, has its own different um, unique um, smell and texture and um, it just um, it, it became uh, it, it, it became like Christmas opening up boxes every morning and wondering what you're gonna see and, and that's why I fell in love with that and um, you know I, I went through a whole career and um, it took a long time to figure out and then when uh, when I got to Canada um, you know I decided that that was the time to, to to be in my own fishmongers business and and try and revive the art of fishmongering in Canada I think people need to understand that the fisheries are the last wild really true wild hunted food that people have to risk their lives to go out and, 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 and bring for us and, and use real not just hard work but um, amazing knowledge and skills and, and passed down traditions to, to make that possible and, and good fishermen are, are like gold you know to a fishmonger um, because they're the guys that make us we can't survive without them if we just had to rely on the commercial industrial um, you know corporate side of fisheries um, we couldn't survive as fishmongers because we would be we wouldn't have any product we would be competing with the big box stores and the big guys and who work just on price and don't care about quality and we will we wouldn't be able to be fishmongers so that's really why I got involved with slow food and slow fish because I need to survive and I need to pass my my business on to somebody else either my kids or somebody else that can be a fishmonger for the town and um, and it's important to me that we do that and, and you know um, the customers that appreciate that and the customers that want that service you know they're still going to be there in the future we need to we need to preserve that and if possible to expand it I'll give you an example of how slow food has, um, has changed the world in a small way and that's because it's changed my life. It's changed the way that I run my business. Um, it's changed my outlook on how I deal with fishermen, how I deal with consumers um, and the way that I, I purchase for my business. Um, so, um, And I know it's done that for other people. And so every single person that changes and, and tries to improve what they're doing and, and improve um, the knowledge, um, then slow food is and slow fish is, is influencing that and, and is changing the world in a positive way. And you know, I talk to students um, at our local college about fishmongering and seafood and um, I call it my indoctrination talk. And uh, and sometimes they'll they'll put their hands up and they'll say it's so complicated. How can we even begin to think about buying sustainable seafood when there are so many issues and it's so complex? And I always say to them that you've made a start by thinking about it. If you think about it and care about it, you're never going to be perfect. I'm not perfect. I make mistakes all the time in my business, and I've been doing this for you know 20 years in Canada now. Um, and you know, um, all you can do is do the best that you can and try to improve the situation and if everybody does that um, then we'll, we'll move the market forward rather than backwards and, and the world will be a better place. Currently in uh, Western Canada we are um, the, the slow fish um, network in, in Western Canada has been mobilized and um, has been partnering with uh, other organizations um, such as t to Suzuki um, to start a campaign um, to try to make life easier for fishermen, to make the quota system and the licensing system fairer, to make it more transparent, to enable young fishermen to come back into fishing with a sense of community and to be able to actually have their own business and sense of self-worth and to be able to have a, a you know a, a fishing business that is meaningful to them that they can make a, a reasonable living from because in Canada for well in Western Canada for so long now 
the industry has been corporatized and we've got to a point where the value chain um, benefits only people that aren't fishing or aren't touching fish or handling fish um, and, um, and and it's become a feudal system and in Canada we want to move away from that feudal system again or in Western Canada we want to move away from that feudal system again and we want to move back towards an owner operator system where independent fishers can have their own businesses and they can market the fish to who they want to and um, you know as I everybody that's in the business knows and it's the same in every field in life that there are a good fishermen and there are okay fishermen and there are not so good fishermen um, and you know that we want to develop more and more good fishermen that care about quality and add value to our resource you know we have to make sure that we add value to it because um, you know if we just fish based on volume and extracting volume, what we end up with is a giant protein mine rather than um, an artisanal um, sector that's producing great food that tastes fantastic. Um, and we can't treat our oceans like mines, we have to treat them like a, a resource that we have to we have to have husbandry and we have to make sure that, that that resource is there for future generations that's our responsibility i'm appealing to the minister and to the ministry to listen to the amazing recommendations of the standing committee who have come down strongly on the side of supporting independent fishermen and strongly on the side of moving away from a feudal system and having more transparency with quotas and licenses and to actually implement the recommendations and pass them into law. I know it will be hard work but everybody's willing to, to do their part to make it successful so we have a thriving fishing industry on the west coast.